Welcome back to our video module on statics. So we've been talking about the second moment or the moment of inertia for a little bit now and I want to use that to introduce uh, another concept. Now in this example right here we're looking at a ruler and we're trying to bend that ruler. And we found that you know if we put it uh, height wise like this it would, it would, it would resist bending mo more have higher stiffness, higher moment of inertia. And if we if we put it flatwise like this, it wouldn't uh, resist as much and it would do it according to these equations. So that's kind of nice to have. However, let's let's say um, instead of bending it just very easily the way it naturally wants to bend, it naturally wants to bend about this axis. Well, and while we're at it, I should introduce some terms. It naturally wants to bend about this axis. This axis goes through the centroid. We call it the centroidal axis. This is the point where if something is given no constraints, it's just allowed to rotate however it wants, it's going to want to go through the centroidal axis. But let's say, let's say that instead we, we in, introduce some constraints and, and forget what those constraints are, how we do this for now. We'll get to that in like two minutes. But we're going to introduce some constraints. So instead of it rotating about the center, instead of it rotating about the centroidal axis, it's going to rotate about the bottom of the ruler. It's going to rotate, uh, let's say, in yellow. It's going to rotate about this right here. Now we know that this is going to generally, if we're rotating about the centroidal axis, the further away we get from the axis of rotation, the more it's going to resist bending. We saw that with the integral of y squared. That y squared term is going to really resist bending. Now we're going to, what we're basically doing is now we're moving this axis away and some of this, some of this stuff's getting really, really far away from the axis. So we would expect the moment of inertia to go up. And in fact, that's what happened. I'll just write down the equation for you. This is our new moment of inertia. It is I bar or it is this is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis so uh, here we'll do that in red so the, the colors are kind of clear compare it with um, there we go I bar relates to the moment of inertia around the centroidal axis I is related to this yellow this yellow and in uh, kind, of, kind of like teal here we have this distance. That distance is d. That is the distance between your axis of rotation and your centroid. The axis of rotation and the centroid. So what we do is we say a d squared. So you can see that the more, the further away I move this new axis away from the centroid, the more I'm going to increase the moment of inertia. That kind of makes sense. We're increasing those y values. A lot of things are changing. It's getting harder and harder to rotate. Now, what I'd like to do is combine this with one other concept and um, to, to see this actually working. All right, let's imagine, well, or one of the cool things we can do is let's say we have a um, shape here. Okay, this is, say, the cross section of, you know, some, some, uh, some bar. And we have another shape here. Okay. What we're allowed to do is that the total moment of inertia, I T for total, is um, we'll call this we'll call this one, is the moment of inertia of one plus moment of inertia of two. All right. And so this tells us what is the total moment. Well, the cool thing about this is, is we're first, if we wanted to figure this out, we would first find out where the new centroid is. What is the centroid of these two objects? And as you recall, with the work you did with centroids, you can build these composite objects. Well, you can do the same thing with a second moment of inertia. So let's say that the centroid is, uh, say, right here, okay? Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to find out, well, what is the moment of inertia of one? Now you might be tempted 
to just list, let's say the moment of inertia of one is say 10 normally, right? But that is about this axis. Now, you need to figure out what is the moment of inertia of one about this axis, about the total axis. Because remember, that's what it's gonna rotate about. So we need to find out where the centroid is and then we can find out what the in or, or what the moment of inertia is about that axis. So in that case, we're going to say, um, you know, we'll say I1 plus AD squared. All right. And that D in that case is going to be this D. All right. We'll call it, we'll call it D1. There we go. D1 squared. And Conversely, or in the same way, we're going to add in whatever the influence is from I2. So we're going to take, well, whatever that um, standard inertia is and add in a d2 squared. All right. So in this case, you can see what's happening here. What's happening here is we're using our parallel axis theorem because many times when you combine shapes, you don't rotate about the centroid of every part. You combine shapes like this, excuse me, you combine shapes like this and you're gonna be rotating about a new axis. So by having this tool, the, the parallel axis theorem, sorry, this is called the parallel axis theorem. It's very powerful. We use it all the time. So it's worth memorizing. Um, by having this, we can use it to um, find the second moment of all sorts of objects. This sure beats integrating over this entire way, space and trying to find a way to integrate this. Rather, we can just treat all these objects as composites. I will note one further thing that one of the cool things about composites is you can add and you could subtract. Let's say you put in a circle right there. It'll influence the centroid, it'll also influence the total moment of inertia. One final thing, now that we've taken a look, a little look of how this works practically, it's worth seeing that the first moment and the second moment are very closely related when we start looking at how objects bend because we use the first moment to identify where's that force acting? Where is the centroid? Where is the center of this shape? We use the second moment to say, okay, how stiff is it? How much does it want to resist bending about that axis? I hope this gives you a little bit more insight and uh, we'll cover more in the second moment on our next module.